episode 026 with Mark Flores. Hello and welcome to another episode of One Voice Can Change the World podcast. I am your host, Tina Bangle, and I'm thrilled that you're here. I have a very special guest with me today, and he is an expert in video and strategic planning in video and storytelling with video. His name is Mark Flores, and he is the founder of Falcon Creative. So check out his work. He's fantastic at telling us why video is so important for our business, for our brand and how we can uh, leverage it. Make sure you listen at the very end and he will give us a free PDF with some valuable tools that we can utilize in our business straight away. I'd love to give a shout out to our sponsor and it is SG Home Loans. SG Home Loans will help you find the best home loan that suits your needs. Whether you're a first home buyer, an investor, or refinancing, at SG Home Loans, we will help you save your time, energy, and money with our expertise and service to secure the loan and home you want. sghomeloans.com.au. Let's make it happen. Welcome to One Voice Can Change the World podcast. I'm your host, Tina Bangle, vocal coach and professional vocalist. In each episode, we bring you an inspiring person doing wonders in the music industry today. We hope to give you motivating messages to help you navigate towards your musical dreams. I'm so grateful you're here, and now let's give you something to sing about. Hi, Tina. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. It's so wonderful to um, for you to make the time to share your knowledge about video and how to be strategic in, you know, how you can create videos and how you can share your videos to grow your brand and to grow your fan base and business. So thank you so much. No worries. I'll do my, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know about what you do and who you work with. Sure. Um, so I founded a company uh, called Falcon Creative, and mainly what we do is we create videos for business owners and brands, and we also help them with their uh, digital strategy as well. Um, because at the end of the day, what people want is to get results mm. with their videos. Um, that, that's in a nutshell what we do. Uh, why why I do why I started the company in the first place is really to help people share their message, share their story so that they can, you know, make a bigger impact and ultimately, uh, you know, possibly make a difference with their community and, you know, and globally because, you know, these days with the internet, it's, it's not, it's not impossible anymore to make a, a almost like a, a global impact. So video is a great way to reach out to people. Yeah, and I'm loving watching your live videos and how you're collaborating with other coaches and I I really enjoy watching you and you're very natural and you're very thoughtful in what you say and all the tips that you give. Awesome. and Yeah, I'd love to uh, share some of those insights that I've learned throughout, you know, throughout my, uh, I guess, experience and what I've learned throughout the years. Yeah, because you're you're a musician and the first time I came across – across you is that you were doing um a video i think you were doing like maybe vlogs were you doing vlogs with um uh, blessy yes yes that was actually a more around entrepreneurship oh, okay and, and and the focus was just showcasing people's creative passion because uh, at the time i was, I was help i was i was a coach and i was helping more creative talents so I was interviewing uh, different uh, entrepreneurs who transitioned from from their day job to you know, pursuing their, their passion full time. So Blessy was someone who, who did that, and she's a good friend of mine. Uh, yeah. And at the end of that, we ended up doing a performance together. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, that was yeah. fun. That's yeah. what you thought. So, I yeah. did, yeah. And you were on, on a hill and um, yes. with the beach in the background, and I thought, oh, how yeah, that cool. Was some, uh, La Peru in Sydney. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I was like intrigued since then, and then and now oh, that cool. you're you know doing what you're doing, I think it's been great. So, um, yeah, tell us about was you, you were inspired to um, mm. 
interview people who left their full-time job and then go into the creative side of things. Is that because yep. you you did the same thing or? Yeah, definitely. I, I, did, I did something similar, me being mm. a creative um, through and through. Um, music was really that passion that I really held on to. At the beginning, I, I liked to, um, you know, back in school, I liked to draw. Um, mm. And I was known in the class for, for drawing and, and, you know, creating uh, sketches and that sort of thing. Yeah, because you're Filipino. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Philites are always so, good at drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then music was just one of those things that I couldn't get away from. And I think it's because, yeah, being Filipino, music's, you know, yeah. in your blood. And, and my, my auntie is a piano teacher, even to this day. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. She runs her own piano business um, in Albury, where I grew up. Yeah. Albury with Donga. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so I started getting some piano lessons. My biggest passion was when I discovered playing the guitar. I think it was year nine music class. And from then on, I just ended up uh, teaching myself. I'm pretty much completely self-taught in, in playing the guitar and even singing and playing in bands, writing songs. Yeah, I, I just decided oh, I'm just going to teach myself. But I think looking, looking back now, based on, you know, coming from more strategic approach, I think I would have nagged my parents a little bit more about, can I get some lessons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at the time, you, I guess your parents did, Oh, I guess your family was into yeah. music anyway, um, seeing that your auntie was in, in with piano. But, like, yeah. sometimes it's the our parents at that time couldn't see it, mm-hmm. right? There wasn't there wasn't that many singing teachers or, you know, yeah. Yeah. performing uh, arts definitely. schools at it's, that time. <laughs> I don't want to stereotype things, but, yeah, it, it is, I think a lot in Asian culture, it is seeing, you know, artistic, uh, creative careers, not really a you know a solid career that, that yeah. you might have, but, but yeah, I think that my parents just really saw it as something that I was really passionate about, and it was you know something that I guess I, I stood out in the family. You know, yeah. Think, yeah. you know, if they think of me, they think of playing the guitar or playing yeah. music. Yeah. Someone who's really passionate about doing those things. So yeah, I pursued that for quite a while, but it was really just a hobby. Mm. Um, playing you know with bands getting up on stage, writing songs, releasing CDs, okay. music videos. Um, so, yeah, it, it was something that I pursued mainly as a hobby, but there were times that I did get paid for it. Um, and, and that's some of the things that I can share with, with the people here is, that how, you know, how do you get paid for your hobby? And if for those who are, might be interested as well is, you know, how do you turn that into a career? How do you start turning that into a career? For us creatives, uh, we're really passionate about what we do. You know, whether singing or playing guitar, playing our instruments, you know, coaching, um, that sort of thing. So I think that there is, there will be a time when we, you know, come maybe like a crossroads where we need to decide, okay, are we, are we going to pursue this just as a passion, as a hobby, or are we going to take it to the next level and try to turn it into a career? Mm. So being clear on those two things is really important what I learned because the mindset that comes from, okay, I'm going to pursue this as, as a passion versus, okay, I'm going to pursue this as a career. The mindset is different. And I think this is where a lot of creative, they fall into this trap, especially for those who just can't stand their day job anymore. Because if you're just focusing on your passion, what happens is it becomes too much of yourself, right? Have you ever found a lot of creatives out there on Instagram, that sort of thing? Everything is about their personal brand. There's not, there's not so much about, okay, what does the audience, what are they looking for? What do they need? Yes. Because that's, that's where the shift happens. Is it's, it's not so much about your passion anymore. Mm. It's more about, okay, how can I deliver to my audience, audience's passions? So it shifts from your passion to what they're passionate about. Yeah. But at the same time, you get you still get to do what you enjoy doing. It doesn't mean you neglect your passion altogether. It's just you shift your focus on what other people are passionate about. So it's really getting clear, okay, who who is my audience? So that's really the, you know, the one of the first things you want to you want to get clearer on. You know, is, is it going to be a career or is it going to be something I'm just going to do as a hobby? Yeah, because I remember. Yeah, because I remember my dad growing up. He used to say to me, oh, singing should just be a hobby. Oh, that's just her hobby. Yeah. 
And yeah. I was like, I was like so much, like I really wanted to just pursue um, music, but I kind of didn't know who to turn to. And, and that's what, yeah. that's what, um, when you said, you know, yep. uh, the, I, I should have looking back, should have, um, gone to someone like a lessons or, or someone that could teach me because it would, would have been a strategic move. And that's what I found, um, that going to my singing teachers and going to the right ones with that mindset of, you could do this as a career and helping you through that. I think that, you know, surrounding yourself with people like that helps you to transition into that mindset of, okay, I can, I think I can do this. And if you believe it too, like a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 And looking back as well, uh, for me, you're right. You know, sometimes all the motivation that you might have, sometimes you're just not clear on, okay, what is a more strategic approach to this? Um, and that's what's so awesome about today now with the internet, social media. That's that's a huge difference, you know. That we that's a the big advantage that we have today compared to years ago. You know, you can easily reach out to people. Yeah. You know what I mean, you, mm. you can widen your perspective. You can really see what others are doing exactly. um, and how they market themselves, and then how you can learn, learn more about yourself and how you can brand yourself a, a bit better because you start to get that feedback from social media, right? That's, yeah. that's the one thing we, did, we didn't get in the past. It's, yeah. it, it's harder to socialize or, well, in terms of getting connection, getting in contact with people. Because social media is really more human than people think. Right? Yeah. A lot of my connections come from the social media. You know, they turn into like real friendships. And and, yeah. and to be honest, my, my business, the reason why I'm doing this full time, most of that come from Facebook. Most of that come from word of mouth through social media. So really understanding how those tools really work for you is a massive advantage. And a lot of, you know, you might find a lot of creatives, they tend to neglect that and they just just go on and, you know, do what they want to do. Um, and sometimes it's just, it's they're doing the old way when really you got to focus, where is the attention going today? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where is That's the, I've heard, you know, like, where is the puck going? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I always hear yeah. that. And then I'm always, like, thinking, okay, where is it going? Like, you know, you, you listen to Gary V, don't you? Of course. Yeah. I, I love, <laughs> that's his, like, I listen to him every morning and yeah. he's just like, okay, what, I'm interested to know, actually, what you know how he's, like, homing in on voice and and the, the future is a yeah. voice and Alexa is it Alexa and, you know. Right, okay. Do you yeah. know? Do you know anything about that? that? Is, is that? Can you can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Um, well, so you know Google Home. Yeah. Like, so apparently, like in the future, like you can you can say in voice the future, command. That's voice right. command. Yeah. Like yeah, okay. order me some toothpaste. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so I'm like yeah. thinking, okay. Theory. Yeah. Yeah, all that stuff, and and I'm thinking, okay, how. How can um, a voice coach or us singers or us creatives take advantage of that? Like, yeah. I think it's – well, for me, what I say, it comes down to convenience, really. Like, I have Google Home at home, and, you know, if I want to put some music on, even, even when, I'm, when I want to meditate, I've got these voice commands that shuffle my meditation playlist. All right. And instant because before before I was like oh, I got to put a CD on or I got to turn the TV on go to YouTube. Yeah. Um, but, but now I can just go to where I meditate. Um, you know, put say some simple voice commands and in, you know in, in a matter of seconds I will get that music coming through. Yeah. It, it, it's convenient. And, and if you're driving in the car, um, having you know you need direction something like that just go to Siri but sometimes that still needs work that technology is not perfect yes <laughs> I know it's taken yeah. me a different places before <laughs> yeah yeah I think it's, it's convenient I think it's people just want instant you know they want instant feedback instant information they want what they yeah. need right now so if you can give that as a business owner the more the make the way the, the easier that you give them what they want the more effective it's going to work for you for your business yeah. Making it making it easy for them. So um yeah, so tell us about more about um, you know, how you can use video to help you with your brand and to be more strategic about it. 
Yeah, sure. So what video does, um, the concept behind, you know, putting video on social media is it, it's an amplifier. It amplifies your message. It amplifies your story. So in other words, it gets your message and story out there to a lot of people online and on social media. The only thing, the only thing with that is it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stand out. You can still get lost in all the noise out there, mm-hmm. right? You still have to take into consideration about um, certain elements that you need to have so you will stand out. But it's, it's video actually does more than helping you stand out. Um, and this is, this is uh, one of the first steps um, for our listeners here. And if you guys have you know, a pen and paper, um, you know, you, I, I can give you some, some tips and, that you can action and you know, just write it down and these are some really cool steps. Yeah. So the, the first thing that you want to do, we've already covered the fact, okay, do you want to make it a career or do you want to make it um, just a hobby? So that, getting that clear is really the first step that you want to do because the mindset is different from both. Um, and then now when it comes to videos, it's going first, okay, what is the outcome that, that I'm trying to achieve? Because standing out is one thing. You could be looking to say you want to raise your profile. And you can, if you want to raise your profile, in other words, you want to look more professional, you want people to take you more seriously, um, then you might start doing like behind the scenes videos. So to just, just to show your credibility, to build that trust. Mm-hmm. Um, you could, if you're a performer, you might do like a, a live video on stage. Yeah. Right? Or you, you utilize Instagram stories or Facebook stories. Yeah. So that, that sort of thing, it, 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 you have to nurture that over time. It's not something, okay, I'm going to do this video, I'm going to start getting a business. Yeah. Brand, brand profile, it's something that you have to nurture over a certain period of time. It's not instant. And I think that's one of the misconceptions people have when it comes to videos. They think one video is going to do everything for them. But it's not. And the more specific that you are with your outcome, the better that it's going to work for you. So that, that could be one, one example. Another one, maybe you want people to, so, to, you want to sign up people to your classes. That could be one. So maybe a powerful video, you know, you might do something where you have a, like a testimonial video. Mm-hmm. Right? So you have your current or your past students giving you a testimonial. Because at the same time, once again, that's building trust and that builds social proof. So that's one example. Another, another outcome that you're probably trying to achieve is, you know, do you want people to contact you? So, you, you know, you, you can sing at their event or you want them to contact you because they're looking for a vocal coach, for example. So you might do like a highlight video that goes on your website. So they want to learn more about you. And then at the end of that highlight video, you have a call to action. Here's my email. Here's my contact details. Here's my phone number, something like that. Um, another example, if you want to build your mailing list, if you want to start getting a specific, you know, your, audi- your ideal audience into your list so you can um, nurture that relationship over time, because you'll find that the people that are going to come to you, they're not going to make a decision instantly. They're going to go, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to sign up with this person. You have to build that trust. You have to give them touch points. Video is one of those touch points, a really powerful touch point. A blog is a touch point. A podcast is a touch point. A Facebook article. Touch points are those that align with your brand that helps people build more trust in what you do. So, for example, if you want to build your mailing, mailing list, then you might do like a – like a video series, like a, or like a three-part video series, right? Mm-hmm. Something that gives them just free value. So in, in exchange for their details, right? So example, if you're a vocal coach and you want to do a three-part video series, it could be like, like the first video could be about breathing techniques, helping them with the breathing techniques. The second one could be about helping them with their vocal range. Another, the okay. third one could be about helping them with their warm-ups and their cool-downs. Yeah. So, so it really is just really simple but effective value that helps to solve a problem that they have or something that they find challenging. So that's, so that's the first tip I want, um, I want to give you guys is, well, that's actually the second one, yeah. um, is knowing your outcome. What is the result that you want to achieve in video? Because once you know that, then you'll know what type of video to create. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Um, yeah, 
that when you break it down like that, it, it makes sense. Like I'm sure that the people listening are thinking, okay, I could I could write an article for yeah for so and so like a publication or I could and then have like a link to get get a free PDF for something like exactly. that and then yeah or or the videos that you said that three part video yeah I think that's um that's a good one for the vocal coaches what you said mm. the breathing and the range and then and then the warm ups warm ups yeah yeah because they're like the ones that people really ask me about how do I sing higher notes how do I yeah how do I increase my range the fact that you mentioned that really understanding what people are looking for what your audience is looking for yeah is is the key to turning a passion into a business that's where the shift happens is when you focus okay what do people really need why would they come to me for yeah is yeah. knowing those things and then putting most of your 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 branding your messaging to address that those challenges yeah is how you you make that shift so yeah so it, it's really marketing 101 isn't it like yeah. it's working backwards from your end goal what you want to achieve with your video so knowing your result knowing your outcome and then so if you look at that if you go if you go from 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 the the result work backwards you go all the way to the beginning that's what I usually like to do. I look at the outcome, then I go all the way to the start. And the start, when it comes to videos anyway, is mm. attention. All right? How do I get attention? Mm. So there's three things. I'm going to cover three things now. I'm going to really break it down, make it simple. So one is, when it, for every video, you only need to think about these three things. One is, how do I get attention? Second is, how do I keep that attention? And then the third, how do I trigger action? from my audience yeah mm. that's aligned to what you want to achieve in the first place okay so that's really the only three things that you want to think of so I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more of that let's go back to how do I get attention because that's the first step if you're going to create a video if no one sees your video right that's, it, it, it's hard to get them to take action yeah. based on what you want so a lot of people wait you know that's a lot of people tend to neglect the attraction phase, is the attraction grabber. Yeah, you really have to put a lot of the work in, in figuring out how am I going to get a, attention? Yeah. Right? How will people click play on my video? So there's a lot of ways that you can do that. For example, if we're, if we're looking at more of the video creation, the production side, then things like having a really attractive thumbnail. Right? If you look at the YouTube videos, the, the ones that – getting thousands and thousands of hits, if you look at their thumbnail, their mm-hmm. thumbnail really stand out. They've got like, they evoke a certain emotion to the thumbnail. Okay. And usually really, a really great thumbnail is like, uh, that works well for RC is when you have um, like a close-up of, your, of someone's, of your face, of the character, uh, where they have like a certain emotion maybe on their face. That's one example. Okay. Another one is, is, um, when they're in the middle of an action, like an action shot, then right. maybe they jump in the air, something like that. Um, and really having it really um, stand out, like, like, you know, bright, colorful, really depends on your branding. Some people have black and white. Right. Something like consistency is, is another thing that's really key as well to, to, um, to, to your branding. Um, so, and having like a title, a, you know, that's relevant and really stands out mm-hmm. to your audience, mm-hmm. having a title in um, that works well with YouTube. YouTube loves those titles. Facebook, on the other hand, is a bit tricky. I think still they only want you to have 20% of text, something like that. Yes. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's another thing to, to mention is understanding how different types of social media consume video. And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more because the way, the way that you put a video on YouTube is different to how you put it on Facebook. Or, or on LinkedIn or Twitter. So I can elaborate a little, a little bit more on that later. But we're talking about, you know, how do I get attention? And that's, you know, that's one way. Um, having a, a, a title, an optimized title that, uh, you know, usually focusing on um, someone's needs, some, mm-hmm. whatever challenge that they have, like a, how, you know, how to, like a how to, turning it into a question, like how do you, how to, you know, 
become a better singer or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So in terms of, yeah, a title, it's great for your video. Right. Uh, I find having just captions as well because you'll find it is another way of when people consume videos on Facebook, they're going to find videos that don't have sound. Right? They'll, they'll play back with no sound. So having captions in there um, really helps in getting your message across. And if, they re- if they're following what you're saying, they might end up watching it later or they're, they're yes. persuading them to listen to it. Or sometimes I find, like for me, when I watch videos, if, this, if it's got captions, usually I don't need to turn the audio on anymore. Yeah, that's like me too. I, I do that. Yeah. And at the same time, it also is going to change on the type of audience you're attracting. For example, if you're attracting a cold audience, people who never come, you know, who probably haven't heard of you before, mm. um, or they come, they see your stuff for the very first time, right? This is a cold audience. So, so the type of videos that get their attention is going to be different. They usually get, you know, videos that are quite gimmicky, you know, almost like silly or entertaining. Right. Um, and keeping it short, keeping those videos really short. Yes, yeah, I think that's that's a great tip. Yeah. Like how short do you need to have it? Um, usually if it's, you know, if it's a cold audience, I'll probably keep it between 15 seconds to no more than maybe a minute, maybe, maybe even less than that. Yeah, yeah. Because people's attention span is so short. It is. So you have to keep them entertained right at the beginning. Yeah. And once... And once you hook them in, once you get them in, then that's where you go to the second one. So we talked about attention. Mm. Oh, going back to making it gimmicky, you don't want to make it too gimmicky but that it's not aligned to to what you do, right? You don't want to overstep it too much that oh, it's not you anymore because you, you still want to come off as authentic to your to your brand. Um, so that's an example. Um, and doing covers, right? If you're if you're a performer. You know, people want to see covers more, yeah. unfortunately, than original music. So that's for a cold audience. Now, moving to the – if it's a warm audience, like people who already know your stuff, then maybe now that you can start to put more, like, originals and that sort of thing. So you're yeah. really understanding who is my audience. Okay, once I have their attention, how do I keep their attention? And that really comes down to the content that you have and how valuable it is to them, how relevant it is to them. Mm. Um, and a really great way is once you get to keeping them engaged, if you're transitioning from addressing a challenge or a problem that they have at the beginning, now you're transitioning to giving them a solution. If you're a vocal coach, you know, you address how do I best warm up my voice, then you keep them engaged by keeping their curiosity about, okay, um, now I'm coming up to the solution. Because you don't want to go to the solution straight away. Because once you give them the solution, they're like, okay, switch off. Giving them some sort of value. So the more valuable you, you, you make it, the more that you're going to build that trust yes. to them wanting to, to work, you know, with you. work with you. Yeah. Exactly. So keeping them engaged, keeping their attention is the second step. It's about transitioning from the problem to the solution. The third step is now, okay, how will I – once, when they get to this stage of my video, if they end up watching all the way to the end, how will I get them to respond to my video right? yeah. so that I can create a connection with them? Okay, what is the outcome I'm trying to achieve? Do you want them to sign up to your mailing list or do you want them to contact you via email, contact you, you know, with your phone number, send them to your website, send them to your video series, um, yeah, think about, okay, if they really relate and they, they find your, your content really valuable, then they're going to go, okay, you, you, you measure your results you, you, because you're able to do that now on Facebook. You're able to look at the type of people that are coming to you, you know, where they're coming from, location, um, male or female. So you get to really see the metrics yeah. when you get into building those campaigns. Yeah. And then and you'll figure out, okay, now I can retarget to a specific group now. So these groups who say they've watched my video, they've watched fifty percent of my video, or they've watched seventy five percent of my video. These these people are likely now they're a bit warmer. So it's okay to maybe give them something that's more aligned to getting them to work with you because mm. they've consumed more of your video. They like what you do, yeah. and they've they've you've already nurtured that relationship. So now in that case, 
if you're targeting to more like a warm audience, then that's where you can, you know, maybe, okay, sign up to my next workshop. Right, yes. You know, these are details. I can give you a really basic example, and this is what something that I did for, for, for my clients. They were, they were going to do like a workshop, and they, they, were, they weren't really well known. Right. You know, they'd probably be in the, only in their business for just a few months. So they're competing with a lot of other people. I'll give you an example. Um, she, she's doing a modern calligraphy business. She has to compete with all these other people who has thousands and thousands of followers on Instagram. Um, who've already been in the business, so the question is, how do I stand out? How do I get people into my workshop, right? So that's a challenge that a lot of people have, and just because you have thousands of people on your Instagram doesn't mean that you're gonna that you're actually running a business. That's a misconception that people have. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, because yeah. you can have a thousand, like over a thousand, thousands of followers, but <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. there's not one person that will buy from you. You know. Exactly. So I have a business outcome. So, so here's how we did, here's how we did it. Yeah. So so this is our, our strategy when it comes to videos. So number one, the first step is we created a video that's quite sort of silly, a bit fun, uh, and it's really short. Well, I think like th- less than thirty seconds or thirty seconds at max. And they can promote it on their Instagram. They can p- p- post it on their Facebook. Mm-hmm. A little bit gimmicky, but at the same time, it helps to show a little bit more about them, about their fun side. Yeah. We market, and, and with that, we actually had, as a call to action, we did say, if you want to find out more, we're holding a workshop on this day. It's not going, okay, selling in terms of, okay, sign up to our workshop. It's, it's $20 or 150 bucks. sign up. It wasn't that. It was like, if you want to learn more, then go to this link, right? It's not pushing people to go there. Yeah, I so, like that. I like that button. Learn more. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not selling. You know, you're not pushing any, anything to anyone. So if they like the video, you get their attention in the first place. Uh, sweet. So the next stage is okay. Now, if they end up clicking to the learn more, then it goes to the landing page, right? So in the landing page is more informative. Yeah. So it's got a video at the top where if this is where you can have a longer video now because they want to find out more. And that I think the video that we had there was like 10, 15 minutes long. Yeah. So, it, um, so that's where you start to educate people now. And then, of course, the copy, the copyright that you have at your landing page yes. is going to be important as well. Yeah. But now they like what they see. They click on the button. It takes them to their sales page where now it is showing, okay, this is how much it's going to cost. Right. If you want to sign up, to sign up, here's the button to sign up. Mm-hmm. So now, because they're a lot warmer to hot, that takes them to the sales page if they want to go further. Great. And maybe in, on that third page, you probably don't even need a video anymore because you've already, yeah, you've already warmed them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just want to find out, like, how to work with you or how, how to get your workshop. Yeah, because yeah. if they've made it to that third page. <laughs> They're right. interested, or at least they're yeah. thinking about it. And then, yeah, yeah. Because I know yeah. I, I did watch your um, video. I think yeah. it's your wife, Kim, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, it's um, – I really I loved it. I did it for her, her partner as well because they're collaborating as well. I loved it. I loved yeah. how you guys collaborated. Like they both collab- – the tea, the tea – the lady with the uh, tea. Yeah, MIT created the company. Yeah. Yeah, I I really enjoyed seeing what you did there and what you created there. Because, yeah, it was all it was well thought out and um yeah the steps that you mentioned was was yeah. very easy for me to go through those to follow, steps and yeah. to follow and then to yeah. So well, one day I will come. <laughs> one day I'll go. <laughs> Tell Kim. <laughs> Yeah, and that's not one of the things, you know, people might not decide straight away, but if, if you keep their interest, oh, yeah. then they okay. track when you do another video, for example. Yes. Know? And that's, that's, that's part of the thing behind the scenes that people don't see. We remarketed, we put out another video, like remind the videos, for example, right. to, to, to the warmer audience. Right. So a lot okay. of times, that's behind the scenes, you know, if you're a cold audience and you didn't follow through, you won't see that video. Only people who followed through, who watched 75, 90% of the video will see the next video. Right. You know what I mean? Very yeah. clever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. strategic from that. And, and, you know, if our listeners want to find out more. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I'll have the links all in the show notes. So once this 
podcast is up, it'll be on the website. It, all the links will be there on their phone. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Technology is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because you started off with me, like you were into music, what's one song that changed your life? Well, when I was um, kind of contemplating about trans- transitioning from my day job to pursuing running my business full time, during my daily runs, I, you know, there's, there's a park I like to, to run around. Um, that's where, yeah, I do. I've I seen do. it on video. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's a part where I go up the hill. Yeah. It's like my like the last part. It's like you know my rocky moment where yeah. he goes up. And then he, uh, but that's where I can you know I see like a view of you know the, the park. I, I get I get a higher perspective there. I love I love to finish up in that. And that's where I like to you know contemplate and and just be grateful and I like to think. That's my that's my mindfulness time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Myself. So. I had, because I have my headphones when I run, um, and, and the song that came through when I was making the decision um, is called "Because Because We Can." It's by Bon Jovi. Okay. I'm, I'm a, a long time Bon Jovi fan, and when I heard that come through, the first few lyrics for that that motivated me, and that inspired me to, um, yeah, just just take the plunge and just go for it. Because sometimes when you're making some tough decisions. You want to come from a place where I know it might sound fluff, fluff, but it's making a decision based on love instead of based on fear. I was really empowered. I was really motivated. I really was really inspired when I heard that song. And what was so, the first line? Do you... uh, I, I, you'll I can, have to sing it. I don't want to be another wave in the ocean. I am a rock, but just another grain of sand, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I love Bon Jovi too. Like he's yeah. someone that stand, has stood the test of time, hasn't he? He knows his audience. He knows how to deliver to the new audiences. So he's always evolving. His music is always evolving. And that's why he's evolved. He knows how to stay contemporary. Yeah, and I love and, the way that he branches out too. Like he was doing yeah. – that that show, that TV show, Ali. Smart. He's a businessman. No, like he yeah. he knows how to run an empire. That's what he's done. That's why they're around for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Staying contemporary. Staying with the yes. time. Yeah. It's good. He yeah. he cut his hair. <laughs> he cut his hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's all grey now. <laughs> <laughs> it still looks good though. What's your obsession at the moment? Like it mm. could be obsession about. Something that's out of the ordinary um, or anything, yeah, yeah, something that's like uh, that nobody knows. I'm <laughs> you know, with Google Home. <laughs> are you? Okay, yes. Yeah, it's it, 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 like I love, I'm starting to create all these playlists on my Spotify. Yeah. So I've gathered all these playlists so I can just summon, I just have to say a line. Yeah. And for example, if my wife and I were having dinner, yeah. so I'd say, hey, Google. I don't want to say it too loud. It's probably going to turn on. <laughs> so I say, hey, Google, dining playlist, something like that. So, that yeah. so when we're eating, I have that. Or, yeah, you know, like if I want to meditate, I say meditation, uh, meditation time. Or if I feel like I want to you know, more like upbeat, I say play my rock playlist. Yeah, so, that's cool. And then now you can go, like once this is edited, you can go, um, Google, please play my interview with Tina Bangle on One Voice Can Change the World podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll come <laughs> up, right? Well, no, I hope. <laughs> I'm not, not always. They still need to work on a few things right. um, with that. Like, even I find when I try to, because my, my song is on, I've got three songs on Spotify. No, yeah. actually, I've got six. And okay. when, I search, when I say that, like, it still has trouble trying to find it. So ah. I, have to, I ended up having to create a playlist. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, it's just one of those technology glitch things that I still need to work on. It's not perfect. So <laughs> what's one of the songs that you want to add on to our One Voice podcast yeah, playlist? Uh, the one that people like is um, All That Jazz. Uh, so I'll send you a link to my Spotify for that. Yeah. Um, that's an acoustic bass song, and it's really catchy. And that's, cool. I think that's uh, yeah, people like that one. Yeah, oh, awesome. <laughs> so I'll put that on there on because we've got a Spotify playlist for one all the guests that I have had 
on the podcast. Yep. So it'll be it'll be up there for you um, and for all our listeners. But um, the name of this podcast is One Voice Can Change the World. What does that mean to you? Yeah, that's, I love that name. Um, I think for me, what that means is sometimes when we look at look look at look at you know, people like Elon Musk or people who are really making huge different difference, making the global impact, um, Richard Branson, Oprah. Yeah. You know, sometimes we tend to think, oh wow, they're too big, they're, they're so they're so smart, or they've got special skills that you know, how can I make that difference? You know what I mean? We can start comparing ourselves so much to to, to these people, but. You, what we have to realize is these people, they, they had to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? It didn't, Peter Robbins didn't just start filling out nearly, you know, thousands and thousands of people um, in, in the arenas. You know, they had to start somewhere. So you just have to you know, really know that you're valuable, that, that you can bring value. And it doesn't have to be big either. I think there was, there was a quote by, by Mother Teresa. She said that, um, you know, in this life, we cannot always do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Oh, that's lovely. Right, because, you know, it's all about making those, those small differences, those small actions that we do. It's like a ripple effect. Yeah. You, know, you never know that down the line, and just because you impact one person, by impacting that one person, you never know how they're going to impact another person based on how you change them. Yeah, that's great. I love that. I love that quote from Mother Teresa. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've never heard that before. But thank you, Mark. No oh, worries. It's a pleasure. I'm so okay. I'm so thrilled with um, all the the value that you've given and um, all the links. I think I believe you you wanted to share a special link where people can download something to help with their brand. Yeah, definitely. So we've got um. Just a, it's a free workbook. Uh, it's, like a, it's a 24-page workbook. It might seem a lot, but it, there's a ton of value in there because I find uh, a business owner's workbook to great brand to great brand storytelling and video. So the, pretty much the things that we talked about, it's, it's in that workbook. So if you great. want to download that for free, um, yeah. yeah, I'll put the link below. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> you're very good at doing the live stuff. You know, you kind of put yourself out there. How do people, how do people overcome their <laughs> shyness? Cause even me, like I've been performing yeah. for so long, but I'm so shy to yeah. go on, on live on, video. On Facebook live. Yeah. Look, you know, it, it does just takes practice. It's just almost just taking that risk and just doing it because the more that you do it, the more comfortable that you become. Yeah. Um, and I think, and, and the biggest one for me is coming from a place where it's not about me anymore. Yeah. It's like, okay, what is the value that I can give to people? How can I teach them? How can I contribute to them? Because if you think about it, the reason why we we have some fears around public speaking, getting in front of an audience, is because we think about like the questions that pop up, pop up in our head is, what are they going to think of me? What if I say the wrong thing? Yeah. What if I, what if they laugh at me? You know, what if I stumble on my word? What if it's not perfect? You know what I mean? Yes. The question is all about you. Yes. It comes, the focus is on you. So the more you shift your focus on, I'm here just to help people. I'm here just to bring value. You know, I'm here to, even if I'm not going to get as many people that I want on this show, at least I'm, you know, making contribution. It's shifting the focus from you to them. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. And just practice. Mm-hmm. It's just really practice. Knowing, having like a plan, you know, giving, giving yourself some direction, knowing what you're actually going to do, having some yeah. gives yeah. you confidence rather than just going there, oh, crap, what am I going to do? I don't know. Yes. I'm just going to talk. So knowing, having a plan at the beginning and just practice and just focusing on others, I think that's, that's what's helped me. Okay, great. That's awesome. Oh, one more thing, one more yeah. thing. Making it fun, making it yeah. fun, you know, doing a live mm-hmm. video with someone else or even doing it like in a place that you really like. Where, like in the park, I like doing it in, in, in nature. Yeah. So inserting fun things because a lot of times the will we're trying to rely on willpower. We're just going to do it. We're going to do it. But sometimes it's you, you can only do so much with willpower. Um, yeah. You're always pushing yourself. You know, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to do a live video. I'm going to. Do, I have to do a live video. But yeah. if you put some, some something fun into that, then yeah. that makes it 
you're pulled to do it rather than pushing it though. And also what you said before, how like you want to see the outcome that you want, isn't it? Like just see the yeah. outcome that you want. So for, for me, I'm like when you started talking about the park and things like that, I was like thinking, oh, okay, it would be nice to have like have a live video and the setting would be at the beach or yeah. like it will be more exciting. And yeah, I mean, it does take some effort yeah, to do that. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 I think it pays off. If you, if, you, if you end up enjoying it more, then people see that. You know, they feel your energy yeah. when you're enjoying what you do and you're being authentic to who you are rather than try, trying to be someone else. Yeah. When people see that, then you're, you're going to enjoy it. They're going to enjoy it. You're going to get better results. <laughs> cool. Yay. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Thank you. All the best, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I yeah. love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Well done. Bye. <laughs> thank hey, nah. you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you guys. I hope you found that valuable and Mark is such a professional when it comes to video. So check him out and make sure you download that free workbook that he offered and also check out his song, All That Jazz, which will be on our Spotify playlist, One Voice Can Change the World Spotify playlist. Now, since March this year, I have been studying to become an NLP coach and a timeline therapist and now I have my master practitioner uh, certification to be an NLP coach and timeline therapist and I'm really excited because now I can help people coach them through any negative beliefs, any negative emotions that hold them from their true potential. I really feel that this has been a game changer for myself and uh, in the next episode I really would love to do a solo edition and talking about what I learned from NLP and what I learned from timeline therapy and how it's helped me really realize all the things that I've been holding back on and really truly living. So I wanted to share that information with you but if you wanted to hop on a free 15 minute call just to see if you if NLP or timeline therapy can help you break through any negative emotions in your life, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a visionary singer, click on the link in the show notes and you can enter your details. I'll contact you and we can get things started. Bye for now.